All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Event Horizon mod, which is being made by form user Grand Protector Dark. And what this glorious little piece of work looks at into the game is a couple of really cool new solar systems for you to explore that actually orbit around a black hole and that on its own would very much make this mod worth it but on top of that we also get actual functional wormholes and that is amazing you can interact with one of these things and be clear across the galaxy in the blink of an eye and that is just beautiful so let's jump into the tracking station and have a look at what we do get now let's start by zooming out to our just standard in-game solar system a lovely place but if we continue to zoom out way down here we have Murph, and Murph is the large black hole that all the various celestial bodies added in here, or at least most of them, are uh, orbiting around. And you'll actually notice it has its own unique icon compared to our typical planetary and solar system icons that we have in the game. And it's actually, it's a small detail, but a pretty cool little thing that the mod maker did add in here is unique icons not just for the star system but also for the various planets within it it's just a fun little touch now before we head down to murph we actually need to zoom back into our star system and head to jewel as orbiting around jewel is our first celestial body and that is anomaly wh35325a which is the first of a multiple wormholes and these things are quite tiny only 10 kilometers in radius and have a very small sphere of influence so it's actually pretty hard to get into orbit around one of these things but once you do you can then use it to travel vast distances really quick and we'll talk about how to do that once we finish going through all the planets in this mod first but let's continue tabbing for now through our standard stock solar system and head to Murph. And oh my, look at this gorgeous black hole. It is quite frankly one of the coolest looking celestial bodies we've seen in a mod in some time. And it just looks amazing. Just look at that swirling particle effect there. Very, very cool. Now it is 70,000 kilometers in size, apparently technically has an atmosphere i actually didn't notice that earlier when i was looking at things i don't think you want to try and land on it though it's a black hole that'd be bad and orbiting around it we have a number of planets on their own as well as two different stars there's one of them over there now the first of the planets that are actually orbiting around uh, this thing is Doyle! And Doyle is actually a pretty cool little world here, 720 kilometers in a radius. It does have an atmosphere, a lot of lovely oceans, and various continents and islands covered in ice, with a couple of scattered volcanoes. All in all, a pretty cool little world with an amazing, if not terrifying, view if you were actually there. And then after Doyle, we have Algol, which I gotta admit, Despite the fact that there are actually two planets in this mod pack that have rings and my weird obsession with rings, I actually think this is my favorite of the planets. It's just so green, and for some reason I really, really like it. But it is 660 kilometers in size. It too does have an atmosphere and some nice topography around the place with a variety of large lakes, oceans, etc. And again, it's just so green and I really really love it and it of course does have a fun little moon in the form of Izetta which is 120 kilometers in size with no atmosphere purely a rocky world and again beautiful view now then after that we have another one of the wormholes in fact this is the wormhole that uh, connects to the one we have a ship orbiting around so once we do travel through it we'll pop out here with a beautiful view of Murph. Now, after that, we have yet another wormhole here connecting to uh, 
another one. I'm forgetting which one at the moment. And then we have the planet Magister, which is a very cool ringed world. Now, it is a rocky planet, 286 kilometers in radius, with no atmosphere to speak of. But a very cool effects here. And just the nice uh, grayish terrain with the pops of green, with the matching uh, lovely rings around it of gray and green. But what makes it even better is its cool little moon of Maggio Masso, which is traveling through the ring there, and as you can tell by the ring of green around the equator, seems to be, you know, matching up with, you know, perhaps it's been collecting all of the dust of the ring over the millennia, creating that ring. And it's just a cool little detail, plus we got a few little pops of blue around the thing. Just all in all, a cool little moon, 41 kilometers in size, no atmosphere. Then after that, we have yet another a lovely wormhole to travel through. And then we have Romilly, a large iced world, 501 kilometers in size, with an atmosphere and a number of lakes and uh, oceans within it. A very lovely world. In fact, actually, uh, on the atmosphere note, quite a few atmospheric planets in this mod pack. Kind of cool. Now, after that, we have the first of the new stars in the form of of Klaus, which, if I'm forgetting here, a fast spinning neutron star, which is absurdly small at 30 kilometers in size. And uh, yeah, just a very cool spinning neutron star. I, again, like the effect on this too, much like with the black hole. And uh, orbiting around uh, this lovely little thing is Logos, another very icy world, 900 kilometers in size, it does have an atmosphere and a large number of oceans to explore, orbiting around that little thing there. Now, after that, we also have Numa, which is a very cool rocky world, quite large, 1,700 kilometers in radius with an atmosphere and all in all a pretty cool place i do very much like it a lot of cool unique topography there good coloring all in all just a nice little world actually i say little it was quite large wasn't it then we have ontos another rocky planet uh, this one with no atmosphere 310 kilometers in size a little bit more bland compared to some of the others but some cool terrain especially up in the uh sort of northern hemisphere and after that, we have yet another uh, lovely little wormhole. And then we have the next star of Cooper. Much larger this time, 239,976 kilometers in size. Very similar to our home star. And orbiting around it, we have the first planet of Novus. 510 kilometers in size, with no atmosphere present. But I very much like the uh, modeling on this planet. A lot of nice smooth areas, broken up by a few larger mountainous regions and craters, etc. Pretty cool, and nice coloring as well. And then we have a brand, a desert rocky world with an atmosphere and a number of oceans and lakes, 540 kilometers in size. All in all, a good little place. And then it, of course, does have a sizable moon over here of a wolf, 234 kilometers in size. No atmosphere on this one, and overall just kind of a bleak grayish planet with the exception of the backside, with the nice little pops of blue there. Very nice. And then we have Fuego, which is a terrifying place, 870 kilometers in size, with a thin atmosphere, and oceans and lakes of lava. Probably not some place you want to land. That would be very bad. I mean, it's freaking lava. And amusingly, Fuego has a moon of agua and this <laughs> compared to the oceans of lava is just oceans of water 418 kilometers in size of course with a lovely atmosphere and just a, a lot of nice uh, little regions here very cool and then we have Mert, another rocky desert world with an atmosphere and water and 350 kilometers in size with a small moon of Klein, a captured asteroid 10 kilometers in size. All in all, a good little thing. And then that brings us to Njord, another ringed world with a much thinner ring than the previous one and a gas giant 2,600 kilometers in size with not just a couple of moons but also another wormhole. 
Oh boy, all the wormholes. Great to, uh, great locations of some of these. That's actually a pretty good location for that one. And then after that, we have Fulta, a rocky moon with a very thin atmosphere, 215 kilometers in size. All in all, nice little place. And then we have Comeda, a very cool looking moon, small at 85 kilometers in size. No atmosphere on this one, but I do like the gray terrain mixed in with the much different, very much not gray coloring in pops around it. Very cool. And then that brings us back to the sun and all of the various celestial bodies in this lovely mod. So let's jump on over to our Event Horizon spacecraft and talk about how these wormholes work. And they are actually pretty darn cool. So let's, uh, Ooh, no, didn't mean to do that. Let's go to the map. It helped if I hit the right key. And basically, we're in an orbit right now of 10,000 meters, which I, of course, used HyperEdit to cheat us here, because, again, they are actually quite difficult to get to normally with their small size and small sphere of influence. And what you want to do once you are here is you're going to want to bring your periapsis down to under 7.7 kilometers. And once you do that, things are going to go fun. Now, let's actually start uh, doing so. We are in, let's put ourselves in retrograde there. And throttle up until our periapsis is, there we go, below 7,700 meters. And then let us leave the map mode there and start accelerating time. And notice, once we pass 8,000 meters, that's when things start getting crazy. Or, you know, not quite as comfortable for your Kerbals. As once we do hit 8,000 meters, our ship is going to start violently shaking. And it will continue to shake, as you can see here, because we've hit a space-time distortion. And it'll continue to shake until we get back above 8,000 meters. So we're almost past 7,700 uh, here. So let's wait for that to go. And uh, yeah, things are gonna, gonna be fun. Gonna be fun. All right, let's actually just kind of speed it up a little bit there. And almost, we are below it. It will start to shake a little bit more. And once we start heading back upward, so uh, back above 7,700, that's when we go to the other wormhole. So let's actually greatly increase our speed here because I uh, probably should have planned my orbit a bit better there. And there we go, we popped. And now that we are beginning to ascend once more, we have transported across the freaking galaxy. And there we are over by Murph. And if we continue, to uh, do time acceleration until we get back above 8,000. That is when, of course, our ship will stop its violent, violent shaking. And there we go. We've returned to normal space. And that is how these lovely wormholes work. And with it, we were able to travel clear across the freaking galaxy in just the blink of an eye. And it's just such a fun cool mechanic. I really, really do like that. And now we are here, orbiting Murph, and could have easy access to Klaus, and then over here with Cooper to get to Fuego or any of the other planets. All in all, it's just a really cool mod with some absolutely amazing celestial bodies, some cool, fun little touches of the unique icons, a freaking black hole because, I mean, come on, guys. Who doesn't want a black hole? And then the creme de la creme of the whole situation. Some functional wormholes. And that... That's amazing. So yes, if you'd like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.